Welcome. In front of me is an Honor 200 Pro, and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. To get started, you will want to open up your settings application, and in here we're going to begin by going into the home screen and style. And this is a general section where you can customize your device. I am going to quickly just lower down the brightness just a tad. There we go. Uh, now, in here, like I said, a bunch of options for customization. And in here we have things like, for instance, fonts, which not very many devices actually allow you to change. So you can change the fonts. You also have the ability to, well, unfortunately, buy ones. But you should also have some free ones that you can download. So you can get more if you don't have any. Uh, additionally, we have also icon packs. Again, you can get more by either buying or just downloading some that are free. Um, always on display customization section right here along with the wallpaper. I'm not even gonna touch upon that. And I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's just an entire theme for the device. All right, it's written right here, just kind of like barely visible. Now, anyway, below that, we have also home screen settings. So here you have uh, some options, like for instance, how many uh, icons can be on your home screen. Uh, it's uh, four by six by default. You can increase this to five by six. Uh, additionally, we also have the mode home screen style there we go so we have the standard and drawer mode i personally do like the drawer mode the standard one is okay if you're an iphone user but this is android so i would consider this to be standard to androids uh, and also it's what i like myself to use as it just hides most of the clutter from your home screen puts it in a alphabetically organized drawer also gives you suggestions at the top and uh alphabet right here so you can quickly scroll through the options or applications themselves um, now going back to the settings, uh, let's talk about the display and brightness. And in here we have two additional, or a couple, I think, more additional options. Uh, so number one, we have the light and the dark mode, so you can switch between those two if you like your screen to be just straight up black, that's where you can change it. Uh, but in addition, we have the option to select auto switch. And this will switch from light to dark mode, either from sunset to sunrise or on a custom schedule. So it basically allows you to have this scheduled dark mode so you don't flash paint yourself self during night uh, another thing in here is the automatic brightness uh, personally I do hate that uh, but if you like to use it you can enable it and then it tries to adjust the brightness to the environment like I said I'm not the biggest fan I'm just gonna make it a bit brighter there we go um, moving on we have a display size so this just defines how big the text on here is, as you can see. So you have default, small, and a large. I'm going to keep it on default. Next, we have the screen refresh rate and also resolution. So on the refresh rate, we have a couple options. We have the dynamic, standard, and high. Not sure why it's selected on high. Hopefully that's not the default option, because if it is, then it's a very bad one. Um, now, going over these, uh, there are technically only two options that I would recommend ever using, and that would be dynamic for people that want to have high refresh rate, or standard for people that want to have a better battery life. So 60 might not look as nice and smooth as the dynamic or high looks like, uh, but it will give you a better battery life while the dynamic uh, tries to push 120 whenever there is a reason to do so, uh, but when there isn't, it will lower down the uh, refresh rate I think to 60 or possibly even below that and because of that you might get but oh, you will be getting better battery life than the high option high option just runs the display permanently at 120 Hertz and basically gives you no added benefit of the power saving that the dynamic does because right now for instance there is no reason for this display to be running at 120 hertz and it is there's nothing showing on the screen that could benefit from that i could be running this device at 120 times less refresh rate meaning just one frame per second and i wouldn't be able to tell the difference as long as there's nothing moving on the screen uh, and the benefit of a dynamic one is that it will lower down the brightness not brightness, but the refresh rate whenever you don't need it to be this high, but whenever you start scrolling up and down, it automatically just instantly flips to 120 and gives you this buttery smooth animations. So that's what I recommend utilizing for people that want high refresh rate. Now, the smart uh, screen resolution just kind of tries to adapt the uh, screen resolution to give you a better one depending on what you're viewing. Uh, it doesn't really state what kind of resolutions it's going to be dealing with, so 
mm, I guess it's something for you to test out. If you think that your content looks a little bit pixelated, you could turn that off as smart resolution will try to use crappier resolution if it thinks that it's more beneficial for the battery life and uh, that there is no reason for you to, uh, for the device to be running the higher one if you're not going to be benefiting from it. Now, below that we have also Video Enhancer and this tries to improve the qu image quality of videos in specific applications which are listed right here. These are the ones that right now will be supported that are installed on this device at the moment. Uh, obviously these, this will not include every single application so you might see some apps missing from here that do play videos uh, but this is what the device itself supports right now from the installed applications and that would include YouTube, Netflix, TikTok and Facebook. You can enable it in here and you can also see the differences so this is before video enhancer this is after so it looks like it increases the saturation of the display and uh, well not much else. And under more display section, we have uh, the cutout and full screen display. Now this might be a useful option if you find that some applications might take the status bar and the little uh, hole punched and just try to render the application around that without actually cutting it out. Uh, one application like that that I have encountered, maybe not necessarily on this device, but on phones that have uh, like cutouts and notches would have been the uh, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA's uh, streaming application, G4, I think it's called GeForce Now. So when streaming games onto that, it was going full screen, but for some reason it was making the gray bar right here where typically you'd have a status bar and your camera. So in such an application, you can force it to be full screen and then it's just going to extend the screen past that point and you'll have the hole punch in your content, but obviously you will have more content visible. Now under notification and status bar, we might have a status bar. Yep, we do have semi a way to kind of clean it up. So we have the pure mode and we have also a couple toggles right here. So we have show notification icons, show carrier name and show network speeds. Now network speeds are completely useless, I would say. Uh, carrier name, again, not really useful to you. Uh, just the reception would be good. And notification icons you might actually find useful as that shows you what kind of notifications you have. But if you want to have like a completely clean uh, look, you can also get rid of that. Now, next we have also battery percentages. We have next to the battery, uh, inside one, or just not showing it at all. Uh, I do prefer the middle option. And last thing will be the pure mode in here that you can enable that hides basically toggles that you don't really care to see, maybe like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, that you know that are enabled, but because they always are, but you just don't want to see them. Pure mode just straight up gets rid of them. Now you can use pure mode along with toggling something, some of these on. So for instance, if you want to see notifications, so you can get rid of the toggles right here, but uh, still show the notification icons. So like I said, just allows you to have a nice clean look to your device. And last thing that I wanted to go into, if I can quickly find it, will be the gesture navigation. Probably will be in display. Nope. I'm just going to search for it. So it's under system and update and system navigation. So here we have the two different navigation methods. We have the three button navigation which has, which has been enabled for the entirety of this video but we also have the gestures right here. Um, no I don't want to learn it, I already know how to use those. So you can enable those and under settings you also have a couple of things that allow you to maybe customize it just a little bit so here we have the show navigation bar if you want to. It looks like it's disabled by default which is a pretty neat option. It just adds this bar at the bottom, there we go. Uh, and uh, it serves no purpose other than like a visual indication on which where you can swipe up to for instance go home or to recent applications. Then we have a uh, slide across uh, bottom to uh, switch applications. So you can do this kind of like an iPhone would to swap between apps. Next we have the Google Assistant which is this. So when you let go 
it launches Google Assistant. I personally don't like that, so I'm gonna turn that off. As I find it that sometimes I'll just try to swipe up and I do it a little bit too close to the uh, corner and it will open up the Google Assistant, which I never use. And there we go, those are all the options in here. Now, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.